Welcome to another religious education five minute recap video. We're on the exam board educast, we're looking at foundational Catholic theology today and we're exploring the origins and meaning unit. Today's session will focus on evolution and I'm hoping that you'll be able to explain the scientific theory of evolution. There's a lot to get through so you might run over today. Now starting us off, science and the origin of life. Well it all stems really from one very famous guy, Charles Darwin. He wrote a book called on the origins of species by means of natural selection. Now what Darwin did was he was a naturalist and he traveled around the world on a ship called the Beagle. In particular, he went to one area called the Galapagos Islands and there he observed lots of different animals. Now, because he's observing the natural world and he's using evidence based in the world, this is called empiricism. It's when you study the natural world and you gain knowledge about it. And this is what makes his theory so convincing because it's based on facts and evidence. Now, in particular, there was one type of animal he was interested in, and it's these little birds called finches, and we'll explore what he discovered about them. Now, Darwin noticed that some of the fin finches, they had large, wide beaks, whereas other finches, they had these smaller, thinner beaks. Now, he questioned why this would be on the same island, and he noticed that those with the large, wide beaks, they could eat seeds and nuts more easily. Those with the little thin beaks, they were kind of specialists at eating insects in kind of trees and in pieces of bark. And he said what he'd found was that those animals with the large wide beaks you wouldn't find many with thin beaks around them and vice versa so he started to kind of reach some conclusions what he found was is that lots of these finches they were producing children or offsprings and these children would have tiny mutations or changes now the mutations which help them to survive would mean those children would grow up and they would reproduce and they'd pass on those changes and this started to explain the variety of species and the variety of life on Earth. Ideally, what Darwin was saying was this wasn't down to a creator God. This was down to a process in nature. So if you have a look at the diagram here, if we draw this back billions of years, it suggests that all life starts off as simple genes. Now, these genes mutate, they change, they reproduce and they give little changes. As this continues, they go from simple cells to complex cells. Now those complex cells mutate and change and produce more offspring. And as a result, over billions of years, this explains the variety of life that we have on Earth. So if you look at the diagram on the board, you can see it's kind of in a tree and it shows how all life is interconnected. We all started off our common ancestor of these simple first cells. And as a result, they reproduce, have these small mutations and changes. And over billions of years, they become big changes. It's how we can work out that we are more closely related to gorillas rather than spiders or worms or seaweed. Now, a couple of key terms you need to be aware of. Darwin talks about natural selection and survival of the fittest. So firstly, natural selection, it's the process of evolution. It's when nature changes. There could be a change in the climate, the weather, predators, etc. But what it says is that species that have characteristics that help them to survive in those changes, they will live, reproduce and pass on their changed mutations or characteristics. And eventually all members of that species will inherit those changes. It's why Darwin found with the finches, some of them had those wide beaks and some of them had thinner beaks because some were more likely to survive in their natural habitat. And since nature is the thing which has changed, it's a little bit like nature has selected what it wants to survive and what it wants to kill off. Hence the phrase natural selection. Furthermore, survival of the fittest, Darwin suggested that organisms, they produce more offspring than can survive. Now, all of these offspring have tiny or small mutations or changes. They're not all the same, but the ones with the beneficial or the good changes that help them to survive, they're more likely to live and reproduce, whereas the others die out. So the idea is, is that you are the fittest and most able to survive. This is why Tennyson wrote a poem and he described nature as being red in tooth and claw. It's quite brutal, really. Everything's in competition. So there's two key phrases that you need to be aware of. Now, the last bit is, is there any evidence of this? Yes, there is. Firstly, we've got fossils. Now, fossils reveal a large number of species that haven't survived. And they also show earlier forms of animals that have then gone on to mutate. For example, we can draw a link between elephants and woolly mammoths. So we've got fossils that are clear evidence. And finally, when we look at genetic code or the DNA of creatures and organisms, we can see very close similarities between different types of species. It's how we know humans are more closely related to chimpanzees than, say, gorillas or orangutans. So finally, 
what I'd do for you, I'd look down this checklist, I'd see if you can explain the scientific theory of evolution by explaining each of these words and how they link to it. If you can do that, then you've been successful. If you want to push yourself a little bit further, try these example questions. Good luck and thank you for your time today.